on YouTube, this is Francis Xavier here, here to help my trusty co-host Aaron make our very first deck profile of Cubix. Glad to be here, man. You see, we had the recording equipment out, and I had a little bit of time before we had to go do our daily life thing, and I realized, well, this would actually be the perfect time to at least get the first one out, like, uh, you know, we've been promising for a few videos. Yeah. And uh, I was deciding, I was debating uh, which deck I want to profile first, because my main deck is, as you can see, Blue Eyes. It's a Chaos Max build. Yeah. Uh, but I, th uh, and again, uh, I don't use staples in my build. That's something that everyone should know. I just find them boring, repetitive, and uncreative. Way too easy to win with. I The most fun I've ever had are games that neither player were using staples. So I think going on the theme of, uh, of good fun and no staples and, uh, and good rogue decks, I actually have decided to do my first profile on my Cubic deck here, which I think is one of the most optimal ratios. Uh, the good thing about Cubics is that not anyone really expects them uh, in a in a tournament environment, say a local game store. I've seen only maybe one or two other people play them, and um, I've been working on them since they came out. Uh, it just took me a, uh, took me some time to reinvest, and uh, honestly, I had to wait for a, a couple of the spells to drop in price for it to be worth it. But every Cubic card in here, at least. Uh, before this video, uh, from my research, is cheap. Maybe a quarter to a dollar, if that. Uh, the, the other support, not so much, but the deck is actually pretty budget. Uh, it's a very, very quick play style. It's win or lose, de uh, debating on your opening hand, but it's, an, it's enormously fun to play. Um, so without any further ado, let's get into it. Um, first thing, any good Cubic decks you run are three copies of these three monsters. Crimson Nova, the Dark Cubic Lord, Duza, the Meteor Cubic Vessel, and V-Jam, the Cubic Seed. Now, I'm going to go over each of their importances. Crimson Nova is your boss monster. The goal of this deck is to grab uh, three, uh, at least in opening hand, or loot into the open hand, three cubic uh, monsters with different names, inc uh, including Crimson Nova on the outside of those three. Um, what it does is it can't be normal summon or set, and it can only be special summoned from your hand by revealing three di uh, three other cubic cards in your hand with different names. It, it can't be special summoned by any other means. It's unaffected by uh, other monsters' activated effects, whose original attack is 3,000 or less, so any Dark Magician or Blue Eyes, for example, effects. So Alternative White Dragon, which came out the se same set, can't just pop it out of nowhere. Um... And when this uh, attacking card destroys a monster by battle, you can activate this effect to have it uh, attack a second time this battle phase. And this is the kicker, the one that will end games really quickly. During your end phase, each player takes 3,000 uh, damage. You can only use that, however, that effect will only trigger once uh, for the turn. So if you have, if you somehow turn it out three Crimson Novas, which I have done before, uh, only one of the 3k burns will trigger. So it's not as much of a draw as you think it is, but this deck can bring draws. And it's so under the radar that not even Konami wants to stop it. It's not an easy draw button like that old self-destruct combo, but it, it, it can happen. It is actually pretty satisfying because at least you took them out with you. So he's your boss monster, and the most of the deck relies on getting him out and pumping him up. Now, this next thing, Dues of the Meteor Cubic Vessel. The deck was, when it was first previewed without this card, the deck was unplayable. It had no consistency. It had so many dead hands. And Dues uh, remedied that just by uh, being one you could normal summon. Because the only ones you could normal summon, the only Cubics that can be normal summoned are Dooza and V-Jam. And you normally didn't want to be opening up with a V-Jam because everything else would outrace it. What Dooza does is, if this card is normal or special summon, you can send one cubic card from your deck to the graveyard, which is most likely going to be cubic karma. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, that itself gets the ball rolling. Uh, oops. Excuse me. During either player's turn, this is a once per turn effect, uh, if a monster was sent to your graveyard this turn while this card was face up and on the field, you can make this uh, card gain uh, 200 attack for each monster with a different name in your graveyard. That's I'm just saying that for posterity's sake. That's an irrelevant effect. What you want is it's essentially a walking foolish burial goods for cubics. And it can also be attributed for some of the other uh, cubic monsters higher in the chain. Which sometimes you will resort to that. I've closed games out with a Garagile. 
uh, or, you know, the, the line that leads to India or Doombolt. Next is VJAM, the Cubic Seed. I'm going to have to read this one because I'm not going to read that upside down. Uh, VJAM is your level 1, 0 attack, 0 defense. Uh, he is a Fiend, dark attribute. He cannot be destroyed by battle. At the end of the damage step, if this card battle an opponent's monster, you can place this card face up on your spell and trap zone as a continuous spell card. And if you do, place one cubic counter on the opponent's monster. Monsters with a cubic counter cannot attack, also negate their effects. If this card is treated as a continuous spell by this effect, during your main phase, you can special summon this card from your spell and trap zone, which on its own isn't bad. But when you think about the current state of the game, thank you, uh, if you think about the current state of the game and how it's been, it's usually uh, dis targeted removal with effects or just or just non-targeted removal, which is even more annoying. So getting this out isn't really guaranteed to go anywhere, and that's all you really... And, you, and a lot of the effects re really want you to have cubics in the graveyard, as we'll go over in a minute. But those are the three main cubics you need to run three of. The rest you'll rarely use... However, they're still fun when they come out, and they are different cubic names, so I'll go over them. For the Beast Path, we have Dark Garnex, the Cubic Beast, Blade Garudia, the Cubic Beast, and for the Heaven Path, we have Garagile, the Cubic King, and Vulcan Dragney, the Cubic King. Now, uh, going on these first two, the Beast Path, where the Earth, Fire, and Light is what they end up being, um... They, uh, they have a trend of they get higher attack than the Heaven Path, um, and they can, they usually get more attacks the higher up they go, and, uh, the way you, you can only summon them by tributing one cubic, mo you can special summon them by cubic, tributing one cubic monster. That's the only way to get them out. Uh, which is why it's a little hard, because this guy starts at a thousand attack. But when he destroys a monster by battle... You can tribute him and special summon two V Jam in defense. Uh, well, not in defense, just from your graveyard, and then you get to search for Blade Garudia, the Cubic Beast. So, it's setting up for your next uh, your next little ascension play because this this deck has a sort of different dimension Hindu feel to it. So, um, what Blade Garudia does is he requires two Cubics of tributes, which if you've done this correctly, don't always count on that. Like I said, the the that goes into Crimson Nova more often than anything because it's just too easy to do. Um, uh, you've got two, your, your two V-Jams from that. You tribute into Blade Garudia, who then gets 2,000 attack as a pair to Dark Garnix's 1,000. Now, uh, he can attack twice uh, a turn. And if he destroys a monster by battle, um, he you get to uh, tribute him and... Special summon three V jams from your graveyard, and you get to grab Buster Gun Deal of the Cubic Behemoth, which I'll get into in a minute. Um, ha I'm I have them all sectionalized for uh, for ease. Now onto the Heaven Path. The Heaven Path they had the same summoning uh, restrictions as uh, as the others. Uh, for the first part in the path, you tribute one cubic. For the other, you tribute two. Uh, however, instead of being beasts, these are fairies, and what they do is they start off with uh, eight. Uh, Garagile starts off with 800, and then Vulcan Dragon gets 1600. When they're summoned uh, that way, they do effect. They do 800 effect damage, so they've got the whole 800 multiple theme going on. And now the cool thing about the Cubic King line that I like is um is they don't have to actually destroy the monster in battle to actually ascend. They just have to participate in a battle. They can attack something with zero defense or. Or, you know, something bigger than take a little bit of damage, and then they can go grab their, uh, they can go grab the seeds, and then when he does that, he searches for Vulcan Dragney, and then doing that, Vulcan Dragney searches for Indiora Doomvolt, the Cubic Emperor. So, you run one of each of these for different names for you to summon them, and just in case you, uh, things go haywire, or you just want to have a little bit of fun, and you want to get, and you actually want to do the cool little Hindu Ascension thing. But, that's it for them. Now we, uh... Now we have the end of the Heaven and Path lines. Because the Beast Path is the one you're going to see happen the most, we run two Buster Gun Deal, the Cubic Behemoth, and only one Indiora Doom Vault, the Cubic Emperor. Now, Buster Gun Deal, he requires three Cubics to get on the field, so three V-Jams, or others if you manage to get it out. Uh, what he does, if he's summoned from the hand, by the way, all the they get their attack sets if summoned by from the hand, which is why... Some of the spell and traps are a little lackluster because they special summon ignoring other summoning conditions, which means they don't get their attack. But he he gets 3,000 attack and can attack up to three times a battle phase, which is really nice 
Uh, I've seen him close out games instead of uh, instead of uh, Crimson Noah sometimes when things have gotten in a pinch. Now his um, he's a uh, thing is now that he's at the end of the line, he doesn't summon V Jam. Well, he does summon V Jams, but if he's sent uh, to the graveyard by an opponent's card, by battle or card effect, you can target up to three cubic monsters in your graveyard, special summon them, and if and then you can add one cubic card from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So the if the end of the line gets sent up, you get three V Jams out, and you can immediately swap into the uh, into Indiora Doom Bolt right after that if you need to. So if you've done one line, it usually act, they both have that similar effect. They both grab three cubic monsters, special summon them, and then they grab another cubic card. So they can swap into each other at the end of the line so you don't have to work for the other. Speaking of Indiora Doom Bolt, uh, same, same summoning condition. He gets uh, 2400 attack when he gets summoned from the hand. And he still does, like the others, he does 800. He doesn't get any extra attacks, but he does have the whole cl uh, claws at the end of it, which is why we only run one of him, because while he is one of the cooler-looking ones, he it usually isn't as impactful as Buster Gundil or Crimson Nova. Like, honestly, if you're doing it for the burn damage, just just grab a random Garagile and close that game out. But you have him for an extra name, and the fact that you say, hey, I run at least one of every cubic in this deck, which is sometimes the appeal of casual decks. You want to use the archetype for all of it. But that is actually it for all the cubic monsters. Uh, now we're, we only run two non-cubics, and they essentially are there just to get us another cubic. We run two Summoner Monk. So you can ditch a spell. When it's summoned, if you don't know what Summoner Monk is, most of us do. When it's summoned, uh, normal summon, it goes into defense automatically. And you can disc once a turn, you can discard a spell card, especially from a level 4 monster from, from your deck. But, uh, but it can't attack this turn. So what you do is you usually ditch a spell, hopefully Karma or another card you really don't need, and and you get out your your Dooza to get things rolling. The opening co the deck revolves around getting a consistent uh similar opening combo to get the play going. But uh, some people may find that boring, but it's actually pretty effective. And for what cubics are, that's just the best way to run them, and it will surprise people. Even though there is pretty much only one cubic type deck I've seen go around. Though I would be open to suggestions to see any others because I really like the archetype. That's it for the main deck monsters. Now we're on to the spells. Uh, you run only two cubic spells in this deck and you run three of each. Cubic Karma, Cubic Wave. Now Karma is the most important spell in your deck because it does so much. First off, when it's activated, you can uh, target one cubic monster you control and then accept, you know, V-Jam because it says you can't target V-Jam. Send any number of V Jam the Cubic Seed from your hand or deck to the graveyard. Then that monster that you target gains 800 attack for each, even if uh, this card leaves the field afterwards. So, a good 2400 extra attack, which would turn into a 5400 double attacking, burn you for 3000 at the end of the damage, at the end of the turn, uh, Crimson Nova. Thing is, another thing it can do is if you summon a V Jam from the graveyard via another Cubic effect, so if you do the main line, you can send, you can uh, attribute this card to the graveyard, and you have your opponent's life points. Now, the most important effect it has is it's its graveyard effect. You can banish it from the graveyard to search for any cubic monster. Send, there you go. Grab your crimson nova, one of your crimson novas from your deck. That is the main reason you run Karma. You run it for its first and last effects. I've maybe done its second effect once or twice. Now on to the other one, Cubic Wave. You run three of them. You target one cubic monster you control and one face-up monster your opponent controls. The attack of that monster you control becomes double its current attack, and that's a permanent buff. So let's say you just dropped a Karma on that, is that 5400? You play that, and now you have a 10,800 double attacker that if they still live, they burn for 3,000 to the end of the turn. So, you just it just sort of Ririokus, uh, pseudo Ririokus the opponent and your monster, uh, and it makes it you push more damage, and it's got the graveyard effect of you can banish it and any number of cubic monsters from your graveyard, then target one face-up monster your opponent controls equal to the... Well, not one, but you target equal to the number of uh, things you banished, and you put cubic counters on them, which once again means they can't attack and have their effects negated as long as they have those counters. So, you usually use it for an attack doubler, another cubic named, summon them, and it, uh, if things go sideways and they've got a board position and you don't, and you've got a grave full of cubics that you can't use anymore... You just start banishing them, and then these things can't attack you, and, and it, give, it buys you a little more time. But you're usually going to be the one dropping bombs out of nowhere. 
That's it for the cubic spells. We have other spells, though. Uh, for consistency's sake, we run three hand destruction because we don't mind sending most of... As you can see, we don't mind sending most of our spells in our, in our one trap we... One three of trap we run. We want those engraved anyway. And it helps us grab into uh, another cubic. It, if we have two cubics of the same type in here, like if you've got two Buster Gun Deal, it's happened, believe me. Uh, you can ditch one of them or another and just grab others. And honestly, like I said, the whole deck rolls around drawing and getting Crimson Nova and just destroying people as quickly as you can. The deck can run out of gas really quickly, but usually they're dead before you get that chance. Um... The other three over run is Recurring Nightmare, because both V-Jam and Crimson Nova are zero attack dark attribute monsters. We run three because uh, we want, if we say we have another uh, Karma out, or we have a Karma in hand, and we have no way to ditch it, but we want to give our cubic monster a buff, but we're out of V-Jams. Use this, you grab two more V-Jam, and then you play the Karma, ditch two V-Jam, and give that targeted monster 1600 extra attack. Also, let's say you've just run out of Crimson Novas, but you have your Fusion Trap active, and you're short just those two Crimson Nova to go into your big boss monster, which isn't going to happen that often. Uh, but still, you can grab Crimson Novas back from the grave, too, and then start dropping them again if somehow your opponent got rid of them. So, really good recursion effect. Those are all the three ofs we run. Now we're on to the twos and less. Next, we run... Two Foolish Burial Goods. This card used to be really expensive when it came out, and I think it got a got a reprint. A Master's Pack, I think it was. Anyway, you send one... It's just Foolish Burial for a spell or trap. Hello, Karma to the Grave. Just like that. It's it's a spell form of Dooza for you. It helps get your Karma to the Grave to get your combo set up. Uh, those of you who are still watching, um, if you are into decks that do something different every game... This isn't the deck for you. It's a very linear game plan, but a very fun and effective one, and pretty unique in the Yu-Gi-Oh! world. And now we've got our two one-ups. We run one Reasoning and one Moon Mirror Shield. Reasoning we run, because uh, first off, we can only run one. I'd actually, I actually don't even know if I'd run more than one. Your opponent declares a card, a monster level, uh, and then you exit. You start revealing cards. Excavate now from the top of your deck. Until you excavate a monster card that can be normal summoned or set. And we only have three of those. V-Jam, Dooza, and Summoner Monk. We have a total of eight monster targets, including the copies. Um, and if it's the level of the if if it's the level they called, you send it to the graveyard. If not, you special summon it. Um I think that's about it. And then the remaining cards yeah, then the remaining cards go to the graveyard. Which is good, because then you get Cubics in Graveyard for Wave, you get your Karmas in Graveyard, you get Crimson Novas in Graveyard to then grab back with uh, your Recurring Nightmare, which is another reason we run so many. So, even if they call the level you don't want, you usually got something you want in Grave, because this will take out three-fourths of your deck, because that's how many cards, including spells and traps, are not viable for that target. And I've done that, and I've just been set for the game. However, it can also screw you and send all your good... It, if you have a bad uh, bad shuffle, it can screw you and then you'll be unable to summon any cubics. Which then means you've pretty much lost, but still it's really fun to see a reasoning resolve in this deck. Uh, this one actually came to my attention rather recently. I didn't even think about it until a buddy recommended it. Moonmere Shield is in here for, uh, at one for one reason. The main deck... Uh, the main line of heaven... The heaven... And, the Heaven and Beast Paths of the Cubics. Because this will give them... Uh, what it does is, if the equipped monster battles your opponent's monster during damage cal, the equipped monster's attack and defense becomes equal to them, except it's always 100 higher during damage calculation only. Which then lets your small dudes get over people's big dudes and then do their whole ascension thing. And when they ascend, this will go to Graveyard, and then it'll... Uh, if this face of card sent from the field of graveyard, you pay 500 life points. You're going to be shaving that off anyway. You're going to kill them before you kill yourself. And I believe you put, yeah, you put it back on the top or bottom of your deck. So if you want to see it again next turn, you put it on top. If you don't want to see it ever again and have it be ditched later, just put it back on bottom if it's done the thing you need to. It's a very good tech piece at one. Uh, now we run three traps, all of the same variety. We run three Unification of the Cubic Lords. Now, what it does, it is our Fusion Trap. 
uh, sort of like the new Crystal Beast one. You fusion summon a Cubit Fusion Monster from your extra deck using uh, monsters from your hand or field as fusion materials. If a face-up... And it, that's, its, uh, that's its regular trap effect. It has a graveyard effect of... If a face-up Cubit Monster is destroyed by battle and leaves the field, you can banish this card from your graveyard. Special one level 4 lower Cubit Monster from your hand or deck, ignoring its summoning conditions, and if you do, it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects this turn. That is mainly why you run Unification. It's a backup in case one of your Cubics gets aced and you're in a bad position. You just grab... You grab Buster Gun Deal. And then when he's sent, he grabs you 3 V-Jam. And so it goes. Uh, though it won't summon it in defense, because it's going to get zero attack and defense, because it wasn't summoned the right way. Now, I have, in the entire history of running this deck, for a few months, and even then online, like back when I played the original YGO Pro, I have maybe gotten out the boss monster once or twice. Sorry about that little technical difficulty again. Uh, kind of like our other opening. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, um, you won't get that... It just The fusion monster won't happen that much. Like, I've had it maybe a total of three times. And honestly, you're gonna burn them and, and attack them to death before you even get, the, get all your Novas together for a fusion. Like, it's just more cost-effective to beat them with original Crimson Nova instead of this, which is why we run only one Crimson Nova Trinity, because it is it does require a target, kind of like a future fusion. Um, does it? Actually, no, it doesn't, but still, you're only going to get the one off if you ever do. I used to run three in there, because why not? But this is literally the only one you run. My bad, I it's been a while since I actually read Unification, because I usually just ditch it and forget about it. That's how often this deck will just burn somebody out immediately. It'll either burn somebody out on the first few turns or or immediately die from a counterattack. That's that's how this deck goes. And if that's how you want to play, play really quick, fun, bursty games with a really interesting looking archetype, then Cubics are for you. Sorry again, this is my first uh, my first uh, deck profile video. Uh, that's it, by the way. That's it for this. But um. Yeah, the others are going to be a little more polished and a little more professional. I just wanted to get this one out there while I, you know, had it on my mind. And uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry if I stuttered too much. Again, first time here. But that's it for Cubics. Um, uh, think, uh, think uh, Francis has a couple words? Uh, yeah, that was a pretty good deck profile, bro. <laughs> I wouldn't say good, but it's it's effective. But it's I don't you don't see many up to date cube and this is for the new ban list but this 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 deck will never get touched by a ban list I don't think because reasoning is going to stay at one and nothing in this deck is at one except reasoning and summoner monk as I think at two that's it this, so this this deck can duck ban lists left and right the only the only time it will get a little bit hit is if somehow foolish burial goods or uh, or recurring nightmare got hit. Which I don't think it will, because Hand Destruction and Dark World Dealings aren't going to get hit in the near future, I hope. Uh, but that's really it. Easy deck to build. Now that, uh, now that you know, Foolish Burial Goods and Recurring Nightmares have a couple different printings. Well, at least one has two and the other has at least three. Uh, I, last time I checked. This deck is really easy to build. Uh, it does take a minute to figure out. Uh, but after that, it it's like riding a bike. It's just repetitive. You do this... It, you'll see different opening hands, but it'll usually end in the same result. One or two Crimson Novas on field, kick and tail. But that's all the time we have for today. So I really hope everyone enjoyed that. All right. Next so time I'm going to do either... Uh, sorry, Francis, I, while I'm thinking about it. Next time I'm... Go this is why it's your channel and not mine. <laughs> anyway. Uh, next time I think I'm going to do either Cyberdarks... Um, or blue eyes, maybe? I've been wanting to do the Cyberdark profile for a while because there's... None of the ones I saw were up to my standards, really. And I found a really cool way to play them. Uh, one of their hard counters is <clears throat> Francis's Dark Magician deck, but that's another topic for another time. Yeah, that's probably going to be done by me, by the way. My what? Dark Magician deck is great. I'll be doing the deck profile about that one. Yeah. That, that sounds about fair, and I'll be doing the Blue Eyes one, because I've found the right ratio that I enjoy for Blue Eyes. So, again, I'm only in this game casually anymore. Hell, I might even do my, in celebration of the new uh, Forbidden Art promo, I might do my uh, Exodia deck profile. It's 
not as cancerous as people think it is. It's actually a pretty... It's a As far as Exodia decks go, it's actually fairly interactive, and it can beat face instead of just winning through Exodia. So, anyway, I babbled on too much. Francis, take us out. All right. This is Francis Xavier and Aaron logging out.